Hi guys, welcome to my floss tube. Um, I'm Emily, Crafty Emily here. It is Saturday the 16th of January 2021 and I'm here a couple of days later than I was hoping to be. Um, I'm going to really try and do one a week but my optimum day to do a floss tube is going to be a Wednesday because going forwards if the world goes back to normal ever Wednesday afternoon is going to be one of my two half days so I should be able to get home from work on Wednesday lunchtime and sit down and do a floss tube. So Wednesday came and I realised I hadn't uploaded my fabric dyeing video. I went to record and my card was full and I was like, why is my card full? And my card was full of <laughs> what turned out to be, and if anybody watched it all the way through, you get a tick from me, an hour and 40 minutes of me dyeing fabric. And honestly, I cut out about an hour and a half of that. Um, God, I talk a lot of nonsense, but I tell you what, I had so much fun dyeing my fabric. Um, yeah, so that was that. So I, I, I did a start bit, I did a wrap up, and then I uploaded that, which took all of when took the rest of Wednesday to do. I'm just gonna get my my coffee. Oh, that uh, sprout cup today. We don't have fancy cups <laughs> in this house. We have cups that don't mind if they hit the deck and shatter so <laughs> my cups are i've got small children cups i really need my coffee it's cup number three and it's 11 o'clock it's quarter to 12 actually sorry i've got a light i put my my light on there to try and just get it is daylight there is natural light it's blowing a gale outside today so if you can hear the funny noise, it's because the latch on the window is broken. <laughs> Welcome to my world. Um, yeah, so then on Thursday, my eldest daughter became an adult. She turned 18 and it was a bit of a it was a bit of a non-event for her, bless her, because we are in a very hard lockdown here in England and with possible more restrictions coming. So we went, I took her we went and did a bit of shopping actually because we were allowed to go to the shops we went to the pet shop which is an essential service so it's still open we got a we got a drive through costa coffee and then i got her a mcdonald's for lunch <laughs> we had a mcdonald's for lunch it was all we could do and then we went round asda and then uh, that was about it really it wasn't a wasn't a stunning birthday for her considering she's just turned 18 but i owe her one oh I owe her a birthday, but it's all we could do. Right, so stitchy wise, predominantly here for crafting and stitching and cross stitch mostly. So I always have a bit of a ramble at the beginning. Most people are already subscribers. I have had a couple of new subscribers. Hello, if you're new and you're watching me. Um, yeah, I'm spitty spatty and talk a lot of bramble while I while I show my stitching. So this last week, because it's only been a week and a few days since my last one, I have been concentrating largely on my full my full coverage fanatics bingo for January. I'm well into my full coverage pieces and I am going for a full counting blackout. So what I've done since I last recorded, I finished off my stitches for the key I had, I think I had about another eight. I finally got rid of this fingernail. It, I covered it with a plaster for about three weeks until it had grown up long enough to be able to cut it off because it broke. It ripped right halfway down the nail. I must have cut it with a knife, I think. So it's finally grown enough for me to take it off. So I'm currently, I feel blind without, without a bit of nail there. Beside the point, but sorry about the horrible pointy blunt stick I'm pointing with. It's because it broke. Um, so the key there, the key here, and the key was, do, 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 do. you can probably see it, I probably can't, somewhere else. I did three, three prompts with the key up here. I was going to do fragile and did the key. So I did three, the 3000 stitches and I just finished them off last week. So I'll show you what I finished off now with the key. I put the camera further back today because this is so big. Hopefully I'll be able to show you. Because I was doing the dragon, I was concentrating on putting the stitches in the dragon. And then I did eight two three, so a lot of the you can see round the dragon now 
there's a lot more definition his wings are completely finished I didn't quite finish his tail off but I have put a lot of stitches in his tail and then a lot of the definition around those bricks and blocks have been filled in because a lot of that was 823 which is a very very dark purpley blue which is a really good colour so I finished off my 3000 stitches in my dragon for my key and that's my first 3000 stitches into that for my 21 in 21 this is my full coverage fanatics um, you, you stitch the number of thousand stitches of the year so 21,000 stitches but I'm going to be putting a lot more than that into it because I want this at 50% my goals are very loose I don't write them down I don't set myself very strict goals because I know I don't meet them and that's something I work towards look being able to meet a goal I set myself I tend to overestimate wildly and then get very frustrated when I can't can't quite get there so little things I can cope with sorry I always throw something onto my cutting mat which is what my tripod's on always so my full coverage fanatics bingo I'm heading for a blackout last time I didn't even get this many stitches in but this time I am seriously heading for my blackout here considering we're halfway through the month and I've got 10 squares left to go now the other one I, I picked straight back up with and I'd forgotten to put it on I took a forfeit here the crosses were the forfeits some kind of celebration didn't really have one had a really good suggestion I should have done the key for the key for the door because well my daughter turned 18 so that would have been perfect wouldn't it but I'd already decided because I forgot to put on the kingdom of books onto my board that I should really put some stitches in so here is what it looks like it comes as a full kit but I swapped out my fabric there's the full kit there so I started in the middle and I'm on this page here now I have very nearly finished this page I mean literally I should have just finished it but here we go look and I'm stitching the background because I want to full cover. This is a full coverage piece for me. Yes, a beautiful hand dyed background would be perfect. And then you just stitch the books beautifully on it. But for me, it's a full coverage piece. Came with all the threads. I will show you my threads in a second. And oh, this is quite good. I can move around here. See, I was hoping that light there would help when I light up the here. So as you can see, basically, I've put 2000 stitches into this background. It's three colours and I've got that bit that bit and one two and a tiny bit left and that background's full and then I'm going to go in and finish off all this all that's mostly blues and creams there I just need to finish off this bit here and then that's the page one done and this is really the first piece I've ever done where you can clearly see I am stitching a page of it and that's because the pattern comes as a sheet of glossy paper this size so you kind of fold it up down the fold lines and there's a page so I've just kind of stuck to the page that I'm on I'm really happy with that 2,000 stitches one prompt because it was my forfeit so kingdom of books Robin finally made me my thread drops and here we are here are my kit threads mounted up on the thread drops he made me this is cherry this has got no wax can you it's got no wax it's got no varnish this is cherry wood and this is what it sands to now this it has been sanded very very finely um, turn it round there's the other colours and all I've done is I've just written on with pencil the number which when I finish this project which hopefully won't be forever she says hopefully won't be too many years we'll just re-sand it off so that's one of my thread drops and that's the other one that's the rest of the colours and then all the extras as you can see these are all the wood colors this is all the background you get lots and lots of extra backgrounds only the pieces of cardboard that they came with were already starting to tear so I said to Robin look can you can you make me my thread drops for these please so he did and they are absolutely wonderful 
cherry wood chap who lives across the road from us um his either his father or where his daughter lives their very big very old cherry tree fell and had to be well some of its branches fell and it had to be taken down because it was it was gone and he basically loaded them into the back of his pickup and brought robin chunks of this stuff it's magic <laughs> absolutely magic and then one of the ladies on my facebook group said he could make those with enough holes for a hade you can hear them do you mean a bit like this there's just under a hundred there i think holes same again cherry i mean these are these are him playing about having a go the holes are beveled the edge is smooth it's not going to catch your threads now we could mount up a hade on these i mean i i won't because i bobbinate i couldn't bobbinate these because these are pre-cut cut lengths that come in a kit so i wanted a thread drop for them but very probably going into etsy and we'll see what it'll probably be is tell me how many holes you need and then he'll make the thread drops to accommodate how many holes so for this one say my other new start hade which i'll show you in just a second has got 88 colors so he'd do two two lots of 22 22 there 22 there and make two with 20 two lots of 22 to make the 88 colours but pretty much and they can be drawn on and sanded back because they're not varnished or anything so you can draw on them with a pencil you could draw on them with a sharpie and then sand it back or you could just put a little sticker on with the with the number and then you know either little peel the sticker off when you're done or you know hates a hates a forevers but these are these are pretty big um but there i've got some others over there he's he's run with the theme he wants an old engine he wants to basically build a sawmill at the back of the shed we've got room for a small hobby sawmill so he's looking into old engines that he will strip down and re redo so i said to him well, you make me thread drops i'll put them in etsy and then when we come out of lockdown you can go and collect one of these engines and you've got to sell some thread drops buddy to pay for your engine i mean these are really we're, we're talking really really super old things but he's a hobby skipper I'm trying to keep him on track with the woodwork at the moment hmm <laughs> it's hard right so for my last four back to stitching for my last four prompts i have put this morning finished exactly four thousand stitches into a brand new start um i got a i was gifted a a haid um gift card which thank you very much i've already thanked and over thanked and thanked again the lady who sent it to me um and i picked this now it's a mini little mini it's called a real snow job and i absolutely love it he's got lots of these and i picked it because i love the clean lines of the buildings i love the snowy scene it just it just really appealed to me and i picked a mini because i've got three enormous heads on and the cross stitch studio super enormous piece which I still haven't put any more stitches into but at the moment I'm trying to black out here and I only put the one prompt the new start prompt was the only prompt I put on for it so at the moment I'm trying to get lots of stitches in my other pieces so I put 4,000 stitches into it my mini snow job um, I did get I did order the outstanding DMC's that I didn't have that I needed for the piece which was about 20 of them so i did order those and as i'm using them i'm you can see as i'm using a color and bobbinating it and putting it in my master box 
and that's just how I'm rather than just bobinating them all at once so here we are here is my start I've literally got to 4000 and stopped my needle and my, my thread are on the back so I can show you where I am it's covered in Eric hair oh, white cat who knew here we go so that's where I am this white you can see it's stitched. I did that whole block of white there. That's the snowy roof. And what I was heading for was here. This is the, that's the little guy who is driving the horse. Not driving, he is, you know, I don't know what the word is. He's, he's driving the horse. He's, he's driving the carriage um, because I wanted to get to, what was it? What was it called? Um, ba -dum -bum -bum. Outdoor activity, so I figured he was taking a pony for a for a ride. So I figured that was an outdoor activity. Uh, a winter scene, obviously, all the snow. It's a it's definitely winter scene. And hat, scarf, and gloves. Yeah, haven't got any of them on any of my pieces apart from here. Those four stitches there are in the guy's hat. So I didn't start top left. I've not I've not even touched this top corner. I went to a hundred. I came across and I started with this brown 3860 I think it is anyway doesn't matter <laughs> I started here and I counted my way to the black and then I started on this building and then which is the lamp the lamp the lamp shop and then I counted down to here to do these bits here on the on the carriage and then this morning I've just to finish off my stitches I just came up here with the black which is the the clock, the clock shop. No, the um, the cobbler. So this is where I came in here. Done all this white here. Come down here. There's his hat. So that's clearly that's clearly the middle of the carriage, and that's clearly the hat. So I've done. I did what I could with that. Usually, when I get a prompt, I like to stitch on the exact thing that the prompt is but with a brand new start you've just got to go with working my way towards it so I'm having a I'm having really good fun with that that's already I think six percent because it's a mini and it's only going to fit this little piece of fabric it is 270 by 230 275 by 231 it's written on the sheet I printed out so there we are and I'm actually using my Kindle, my Pattern Keeper in Kindle for this, because I've still been using my phone for everything, even though I bought myself the Kindle long before Christmas when it was super, super cheap. Um, finally using the Kindle. So that was one of my new starts. So I've done that. That's And that's where I am with my full coverage. Now, my next full coverage pieces, I've got four randoms so I'm going to pick up my shipping trees my shooting star my Carolyn Manning I'm going to put another thousand stitches in my fragile story keep which I am which should take me quite close to getting it done I hope and hello come hello. Me. yep oh. can you hand me the bag of thread drops please mm. Because you've been busy. Yeah, you I've been awfully busy. Right. Thank you. I couldn't quite, quite reach Scottish them. That was it. I don't know what that was. No, Swahili. It's not that either. Oh, he's not been up very long. I needed this room, and they were still asleep in here. So I kept in and was like, "Right, boys, out. Your time is up. Get up. Eleven o'clock in the morning. Get up. Get out. I want to do a floss tube." So he'll be back with my coffee as he always is and then so I've got the four there and then after that I have got two more prompts on the Bountiful bookshelf and then I have will just have three prompts four prompts on my treasure hunt bookshelf which I've got to put back on the scroll rods so that's a job I need to do sooner rather than later because I need to get onto my treasure hunt bookshelf because that will be the last 4,000 stitches I do for my bingo and how I do on that determines whether I get the blackout or not. So that's that. That's my bingo done. Now, I still have 
three new starts to show you. This is a full new starter. My Halloween at Hawkrun Hollow, which is a new start since my last floss tube, but I did start it in the, I showed you my little start on um, my dyeing video. Here we go, Halloween, Hawkrun Hollow. So what I did was I pulled the DMCs and I had almost all of them. So I pulled, oh, that was quick. Oh yeah. Don't be sweary, don't kick I things. I never swore. I noticed. I would have edited you if you swore. He's a ninja. He's not a ninja. Right, off you go. Bye. <laughs> right leg doesn't work it's got no the, the nerve the the pain he has is because he's got nerve damage at the base of his spine where his back was broken and he can't feel his right leg so he walks like he's had he walks with a funny limpy gait and he doesn't lift his foot up if anyone's dealt with a partner or a parent that's had a stroke and doesn't half the body doesn't work properly his right leg's very like that because he's got the nerve damage is very similar and he can't lift his right leg high enough. He doesn't. He doesn't have any spatial awareness of it, so that's why he falls over everything. And our house is like a bomb site. There's stuff. There's boxes of stuff everywhere. So you know he trips over everything all the time. We don't laugh much. Anyway, Hawkrun Hollow Halloween. I pulled the DMCs. I had quite a lot. I, I actually had almost almost all of them. And then what I did was I sat on Lakeside Needlecraft. And I matched, I looked at the pattern and I sort of went, yeah, that grass there, that hill, that there, that ground, they all need uh, an over dye. So I tried to match up the colour. I pull, pulled out the DMC and went, right, this colour needs to be an over dye. And I'd sit, I sat on the, looking at the colours and tried to match them up. I did not bad, did not bad. And then I did have to order from Arts and Designs and I ordered that at lunchtime and it came in the post the next morning. That's actually full of DMCs, that's not what I got from them. But so you can see these, these are my colours. Some of them are the DMCs, some of them are there's classic colour works, there's some weeks. I've pulled instead of using a crew, it was not is it a, I think it was a crew, I'm going to use the DMC variations 4150, which is variations of a crew. So, um, yes, my colours are all in here. There's, yeah, there's uh, some weeks. So each one I'm using, this, these are the colours I need for the first block. This one, this block here. Those are the colours I need for that block. And let me show you where I am. I, I was kind of getting a bit wanted to do this more and more and then realised I really should do some full coverage stitches so I kind of stopped but there's my grass it is an over dye I'm using and I'm using curry weeks dye works curry which is nice enough because it should be 834 which is gold and olive very light and that was the nearest I could kind of find to to that if I had access to a, a real shop and I could have gone in and pulled them and picked them, I'd have probably done a better job choosing. But we've got what we've got at the moment. So I have started that block. And as far as the border goes, actually take it out of this for now. As far as the border goes, that box and that box are complete. That one's complete. That one's complete. So it fits. It well fits into my fabric. This is my, I do love this fabric. I, I, even if I say so myself, I think I did a really good job of my fabric here. And I'm going to, lo I love how the way the colours are jumping off it. So I think that's going to be, it's going to be one of my favourite pieces. So it's kind of a mishmash up. I have got all the colours. I haven't put my DMCs away yet. I have annotated the... The list of colours I have written on what I'm going to be using if I'm not using the correct DMC. I didn't want to stray too far from the path. Didn't want to go too far from the path in case, you know, I because I, I love the way it looks, but I wanted it on a different fabric. But then um, 
yeah I didn't want to change the actual look of the piece too much so I've kind of gone with as close as I can get the only thing I have put I've got a classic colour works here oh, it's not a classic colour works it's gentle art I don't know I'm reading it's I'm reading it it says gentle art and I've written across the top the swamp this is grasshopper and this looks swampy to me so here the swamp there in the actual piece in the on this sample the background of the swamp is fabric now because my fabric is blue and purple i want that to be the sky now the sky is stitched in 310 but on my piece the sky is going to be fabric and the swamp is going to be stitched so i'm going to reverse it it's the only one i'm going to have to do that with um, but I'm not going so I picked this slightly lighter than it's showing actually it's showing a bit bright and keen it's about that color so I'm going to stitch behind all this this little this little owl and this little monster and and the alligator and everything this is going to be the swamp behind them in this grasshopper color and the only other one that I'm going to change up like that is this one here where that's stitched in black I'm going to leave that fabric I'm not going to stitch the black background on that because it's fabric everything else is going to be as it is so this will look very different because it'll have the dark background these the ghosts and the moon the moon on that one is going to be fantastic it's going to stand out a mile on the dark fabric Similarly, these lightning bolts will stand out so well on the dark fabric. I really just want to get on and just stitch it. I know they take years. I know because I'm stitching um, the shawls and I'm nowhere even close. So that's that. I've got two more stitch pieces to show you. And we'll be nearly there. So. I started another piece now this is a temperature piece I know I said I wasn't going to do it but I was debating whether to redo my do the temperature tree again and then I saw the temperature bookshelf which is from a lady who actually watches me <laughs> she's absolutely lovely she has got her costume but she's an embroiderer which is lovely to see something different and she's called Christy and she's got Christy's corner um, if I remember I'll link her below but this is her temperature bookshelf for well whichever year you want to do it so I'm doing it this year and what it is it's a bookshelf with 12 12 shelves and each each day of the month is a book so I started here um, I should put in a picture I'll pop in a picture here of her mock-up and I saw it and I saw it and I thought, yeah, I want to do it. And last year, my temperature tree, which I've still got to finish, um, I picked the medium temperature. So it never really got very, very hot and it never really got very, very cold because I took an average. I picked the average of the day temperature. So if it had spiked really hot or gone really cold, it tended to average out. So I've got a lovely naturally looking tree, which is which is lovely. But this year I want bold. So here is my start. I've done just enough bookshelf. There'll be 2021 20, here and that's that's the centre line there. This is on a piece of the 32 count um, Platinum Laguna that I dyed grey. That's part. This is this is a piece that I murdered when I when I dyed it. Um, and then I've done up to day. I think I've done day eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes, I've done eight days. So the top half of the book is the co is the is the minimum temperature, and the bottom half of the book is the maximum temperature. So my books are going to be two tone. Um, I'm going to see. I'll maybe backstitch them, or maybe not. If I get a lot of, uh, if I get like a week where the temperature is basically the same. So it looks doesn't look like a pile of books. I might um, I'll make a decision later to backstitch them or not. And if I do backstitch them on the backs of the bigger books, I'll put a letter so it will spell. You can see I'm already thinking about it. I might spell out January, February, 
you know, on the on the wider books where I can backstitch neatly a letter on like the spine of the book. I'm thinking about it. So my colours are these. Another. This one's live edge. So this one's cherry with a live edge. So he's left the bark on. Now cherry doesn't shed its bark. Quite a lot of wood, when it's dry, the bark will peel up and it basically has to come off. Cherry doesn't do that. It stays very, very, I'm just, you can see I'm putting quite a bit of flex into that. It stays perfectly attached. So here's my temp. I've just written on it with a, with a black fine liner because it's mine. So the coldest, we go from very, very pale turquoise up through the blues into the greens green and yellow change and then into the brighter yellows into the oranges the reds and then the purples are just the very very hottest that's got to get over 27 degrees celsius to use this purple so that's going to be maybe one day in usually our hottest temperatures back end of may weirdly enough and then this here is an anchor 357 I think it is I had two skeins of it so I thought brilliant I bought these cheap 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 to do Renato Perlin's Christmas that's the colour the trunk mostly is on that so I still had I still had a brand new skein in a part you said gain so I thought right that's going to do my bookshelf so there's my colours I pulled these out of the anchor the anchor the bottom of my floss box where all the anchor threads are that's where I pulled those from mostly a couple of them were from where I rolled up little old bits like this bit here that was just a little found piece so I'm super happy with those I've kept these colors where I've I've only taken off a couple of lengths of each color but I've kept them separately so that if I need to find them again it's not going to take me long to just you know if I run out of a color I assume my most of my books are going to be these colors the dark blues through to the oranges and then I'll have a few this colour and I've already got a few at this end because mostly you use the middle of range. Certainly in the UK we use, we have a very small, my temperatures go from anything colder than minus five and we're Celsius up to 27. And I'm not expecting much between sort of five degrees to about 15. Yeah, so that's that's going to be the majority of my books are going to be this kind of colour. Which is fine because we, you know, we don't we don't vary a lot here. We don't get the very very hot summers and very very cold winters. We just don't. So there's my colours on another one of my, th on my thread drops. So that was that. Uh, that's going to. I've written on. I'm actually. I've actually bought a little diary. What have I done with that? This year, it's a little A6. <coughs> Here it is little a6 diary i'll show you this in a sec for the year just picked it up in tesco's 2021 and each day i'm noting down what i'm doing how many stitches i'm doing what else has happened in the day not i'm only counting my full coverages this one see i've written a mini real snow job 710 stitches Halloween at Hawkrun Hollow, lots of borders and a cat. So I'm not counting every single stitch I do, but I am counting my full coverages. This here I'm using as a pencil case. This isn't a project bag. I made this when my little boy was in the lower years. We call it key stage one here in the UK. So um, early years is is nursery and reception and then they go into key stage one which is year one year two and year three and they have a little reading book and a reading record and they kept he had a water bottle incident so i made him a little cover to keep his reading book and his reading record in there's it's double vinyl there's vinyl under this fabric it was for my little boy it is space theme and then there's astronauts under there nice jolly red zip so it's actually got two layers, there's vinyl between. And he doesn't have, he doesn't use it anymore. So I took it back and now it is my pencil case. 
could be used as a project bag but a project bag I feel I'd put the zip that way put the zips this way because it was for a it was for a book so I'm using that as my pencil case I've got all my fine liners my fine sharpies in there my fine liners are in there I've also got pencil in there I've got a I've got a piece of dinky dye silk that I found in the car full length of down under blues sitting in my cup holder so I cleaned all the dust and the and the bits of fluff off it and rolled it up and it's in there for now until I pick up Anzac again anyway that's that and then I started this last night the Emma Congdon from the cross stitch of February that I really wanted to do that I struggled and struggled to dye the fabric the right colour and here is my start this was about an hour and a half last night I have done kinds so I'm there spot the mistake not my mistake my mum and I are critical. We always used to get the knitting magazines, um, Simply Knitting, always had an Alan Dark pattern in it. So we always got those. I like Alan Dark very much. Um, he makes toys, knits toys, does patterns for toys. Um, but um, yeah, we'd go through the magazine and we'd go, oh, there's a mistake. Oh, they haven't sewn that up properly. There's a pucker on that jumper. You just do it automatically. Now look at this see the top of the eye those two stitches there are charted to be hanging over the edge like this nah, nah. my eye I, I use the pattern my eye looks like this and then I looked at that and went oh I've done it wrong I've done it wrong how have I done it wrong was I not looking so I went and checked the pattern I found the typo it's beautifully stitched I'm horrible. Oh, I'm a horrible person. Anyway, that's where I am with that. I really love it. I love the way the colour pops. I am not using the called for DMCs. I am using some things I found at auction. Look at this paper bag from the co-op. This paper bag's probably five or six years younger than I am. And I got this in an auction lot full of anchor threads so I have just literally pulled colours that look a bit like it are a bit samey samey and I'm just going with it I'm just winging it I have pulled one called for DMC I didn't have the right kind of green to bear that is the called for DMC and I've taken it off my bobbin I took in one long thread off my bobbin and that will be enough for the piece now, this is 32 count, um, but it's not anymore. Um, I started this out over two and it was super crowded and my stitches were not neat. I like cross stitches to look like that. Really neat. You can see it's a cross. I like, I kind of like having a little bit of contrast to the fabric. Not enough for it to be wholly ga gappy, just enough, you know. And I just started off with this green line here and it, it looked kind of messy. And yeah, my fabric, because this is the one I dyed, re-dyed and then dyed again, has shrunk quite a bit. I think this is probably 34 count now. So one strand is working out beautifully. So I'm happy with that and I'm doing it one strand. Say lovey. And some of them, some of the threads were in this. This was a pack I got at auction. It was in the same box. And look at the anchors in there. Look at the labels on them. Look at these anchors on a card, on a bobbin. But they've obviously been bought on a bobbin. What's that? Hmm. Anyway, this was for a tablecloth. It looks like that. I probably, I think I have it. I think I'll, I'll obviously have the piece as well. So, no date on it at all. Um, so, 
it's all made in England, it's all done in England, it's old, it's old, but that was one of the packs and I'll be using some of this, this green here, I'll be using some of that in this piece. So that's that. I think I'm nearly there, guys. Um, Robin, as I say, Robin wants an engine. He has made me needle drops. Now they're mostly in three sizes. Let me find. Yes, they're mostly. We've mostly got three sizes here. No large ones. So, he has made larger needle drops. This is our little logo, the Robin. He's called Robin Clark. So that's the Robin with the C. So that's his brand that he puts on his homemade wooden work. So there's that size. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 holes on that one and then there's a live edge which when you turn it around looks like that now this bottom bit yes that's live edge but this is again pottery smooth I've been back over them with the um, with the sander again there's his brand now this this is cherry and this is oak and the oak ones are from Fife. This is from the oak tree in his mother's field where his mother's horse lives and her tree, one of her trees came down in one of the big storms we had and it's been sitting there seasoning for years. It's now large parts of it have come down to us. So this is oak from his mother's field in Fife. Scottish oak. And then there's the medium sort of sized ones. We're getting into smalls territories. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen there. He's just <laughs> he's just random with it. And then there's a the dinky do. Little one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So a little small with ten colours. Got to shook. There's one there with an eye. It's got a little knot. So it's got a little got a little holy in it. But as you can see, they're rather lovely. I've got a whole I've got a whole bag of them. The only way I can get them to do something is to say, right, you want that engine? You make me thread drops. They will be going into the Etsy shop, which I will try and link. I'll try and remember. It's not that I can't link below. It's that I don't remember to. <laughs> I shall try and remember to link our Etsy shop below. And Robin's made some thread drops. Last time I didn't do a giveaway. I've always done a giveaway in my floss tubes and I forgot to do a giveaway. This time, because I had such a thank you for whoever watched my dyeing video it went on forever and it was nowhere near as good as some of the other dyeing videos I've watched which I forgot to link up oh, forgive it this time is this if you would like my piece of 32 count oh dear I killed it in the microwave fabric it is not I don't have a tank measure it's 32 count it is that long <laughs> why don't I have a tape measure here I always have a tape measure I've got biscuits I've got clusters I've got all sorts of other things I've got a cup of coffee I can't even see my ruler he's not put sweeteners in my coffee again I should go and shout at him when I finish my video. Anyway, it, it's the size it is. That's my 11 inch Q-snap. It's... 
Hmm. That long by about five inches wide. So you get a you get a couple of little smalls on this. If you like this, just leave me a comment, mention fabric, and I'll do, I'll draw for next I'll draw for next floss tube. But it's not my thing. I was dyeing the piece specifically to put a piece of Barbara Anna on, and this was not what I was intending to do with it. I killed it. But weirdly enough, the comments I've had from that video, most most people said I actually really like that piece. So somebody who really likes it can have it. Because <laughs> I, I, I don't do... I see a little bit of uh, a Not Forgotten Farm or something on it. You know, something a bit offbeat. You might have to do a bit of a jiggle to fit them because it's a long and skinny. Because it was for a long and skinny piece. But it's there and if you'd like it leave me a little comment below mention fabric and i'll put you in the dib for the, the, the prize other than that um i am back to work i was furloughed for all of one week completely furloughed for all of one week obviously i'm not back at my other job because it's hospitality um but i am back at my original job and i'm back for the four mornings a week nine to one so there's that and I've got some I've got some work to do at home this weekend which will net me a full day's pay so that's going to be very helpful as well um yeah got called back in Wednesday yes I went in Wednesday I don't work Thursday and I went in on Friday yesterday so and I'm in next week so we'll be in from here on in now unless non-essential businesses get shut because it's not an essential business it's they count themselves as manufacturing but we make gifts and we've got enough orders to be open. We've got enough orders to justify us being there, but it's not essential. So if they shut essential businesses, we'll be back on furlough, but I can't see it happening now. And that's fine, you know, <laughs> it's been long enough not working. So um, yeah, my whole month of stitching has turned into a week of stitching and I did get a lot of stitching done. Um, and that's about me, that's, that's, that's me done. So I've got lots to get on with, I'm going to, churn all my full coverage around now put away the ones that i've finished working on for now pull out the others that i've not started i've got to sort out my treasure hunt bookshelf so there'll be stitches in that next time you see me and the trick for me just now is not to work too much on my non-full coverages because i want to finish my bingo and to finish my stitches on my bingo i need to not work on my other new things so i've had a really good week done lots of stowing done very little else I haven't done a great deal tidying up but I have done a lot of stitching and I've had a really good week and I have an adult child number one tick raised child to adulthood tick she's obviously still <laughs> I haven't like booted her you're an adult now leave she'll be here until she goes to university in the early autumn wherever it is that she ends up at university we still haven't heard from Cambridge but she has four other offers so Hopefully she has three other offers. Yes, she has three other offers and we didn't hear from Durham. I don't think she finished, quite finished the full. There was another exam she had to sit for Durham and she couldn't get a, sp couldn't get a slot. So she's still trying to look into that. And we haven't heard from Cambridge yet. So we're still waiting <laughs> to see to see whether it's a yes or no. But the, the exams have been cancelled um, for definite. So we're not quite sure how they're going to do the gradings. But she's she's already assured some pretty good grades because that's that's the level she's working at. But she really wanted to sit the exams. So now we wait and see what's going to happen with that. But anyway, never mind. And I will see you really soon. Have a really good stitchy week. I'm going to try and not leave it much longer than a week. I'm going to try and now do my floss tube so that I can get myself to Wednesday. And when I do one on a Wednesday, I'll try and do one every Wednesday. That's my plan. Till then, guys, I'll see you soon. Bye bye for now. Bye.